day 333 of the Trump administration. And we have brand new reporting on what may be the direction of Robert Mueller's investigation and what that might mean for the president. The Washington Post reports it this way tonight, quote, White House lawyers are expected to meet with special counsel Robert Mueller's office late this week seeking good news that his sprawling investigations focus on President Trump will soon end and their client will be cleared. But people familiar with the probe say that such assurances are unlikely and that the meeting could trigger a new, more contentious phase between the special counsel and a frustrated president, according to administration officials and advisors close to Trump. People with knowledge of the investigation said it could last at least another year, pointing to ongoing cooperation from witnesses like former Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos and former national security advisor Michael Flynn as well as a possible trial of two former Trump campaign officials. This new reporting comes as the president's allies on the right, including friendly media, are escalating their attacks on the special counsel, his team, and the FBI. We may now have proof the investigation was weaponized to destroy his presidency for partisan political purposes and to disenfranchise millions of American voters. Now, if that's true... We have a coup on our hands in America. There's nothing to this investigation. The president has been emphatic. The, the, the rest of us know there has been nothing uh, to do with Russia or, or any of it. It's, 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 it's a made-up fantasy. based on everything fantasy. you're saying, it just seems like there's a specific intended purpose to undermine you know, the president. There's nothing to hide. There is no collusion. The special counsel's team has also come under fire as recently as this weekend simply for obtaining access to thousands of emails sent and received by Trump officials during the transition. The lawyer for the transition has said the documents were not illegally uh, obtained, something Mueller's team in a rare statement this weekend denied. Here was the president on that. Mr. President, do you believe your transition team emails were improperly taken? Not looking good. It's not looking good. It's uh, quite sad to see that. So my people were very upset about it. Uh, I can't imagine there's anything on them, frankly, because as we said, there's no collusion. There's no collusion whatsoever. But uh, a lot of lawyers thought that was pretty sad. President Trump, however, has tried to tamp down growing speculation that he might try to get rid of Robert Mueller. No, I'm not. No. What else? What are you surprised? This all comes amid NBC News reporting that the FBI warned the president in July of 2016 that the Russians would try to infiltrate his campaign. Our lead-off panel on a Monday night as we start a new week. Philip Rucker, White House Bureau Chief for The Washington Post. Ashley Parker, White House Reporter for The Washington Post. Both are MSNBC political analysts. And with us as well, Mika Oyang, veteran Washington attorney, former staffer for the House Intel and Armed Services Committees. Uh, good evening and welcome to you all. Philip Rucker, set the scene for us. What is this meeting likely to be like? And is this the yeah. kind of scene where Mueller or his chief deputy says, need to talk to you about talking to your client? Potentially, Brian. It's being built as a status conference meeting. It'll be later this week. And the Trump lawyers are heading into it uh, optimistic. They, they believe that they're going to get some sort of timeline from Mueller that they hope will show that the investigation is winding up, at least as it regards their client, the president of the United States, that is the only uh, person that they really care about uh, in this meeting. And they want to hear from the special counsel a few things. Uh, one, are there any more documents that they need? Two, are there more interviews that they need to conduct with White House officials. And as you mentioned, potentially there could be a discussion about whether uh, the president himself would, would at some point be interviewed. Uh, we know that the president has not been interviewed, nor has the vice president, Pence. Uh, but this could get it, become a contentious meeting if, in fact, Mueller signals that this investigation is nowhere near complete, which is what uh, we're you know, hearing from people familiar with the status of this investigation. And if it goes on for some time, you're going to have very disappointed and frustrated uh, Trump 
employers who may be faced with changing their strategy and becoming more combative as it regards Mueller. And so, Philip, just to put a finer point on this, there is a risk going in that we all know of that the president has been so buoyed by the rosy reports yeah. from his own legal team that I swear to God, Mr. President, this thing is is just about wrapped up end of the year at most that he'll then be disappointed and angered at that point. That's right, Brian. And that is in the view of some Trump advisors, an alternate reality. They don't think uh, this investigation is anywhere near complete, and they are very concerned that the president has been misled by his lawyers to think that it's going to be over soon. And when, of course, he finds out that potentially it's not over soon, he could erupt or, or get frustrated and, and potentially try to do some, take some action, such as, you know, making a change at the Department of Justice or something rash. Uh, so Ashley Phillip used the phrase alternate reality reality only in an alternate reality does a president try to discredit and take down the FBI do you hear a president trying to discredit a guy with the resume of uh, Robert Mueller who in his circle where is this coming from do you think sure uh, I would make two points on that the first is that dis discrediting people and especially institutions, especially democratic institutions, is nothing new for this president, right? As you know, we've seen him try to do it with the media. We've seen him try to do it with the federal judiciary. We've seen him sort of not even take all of the intelligence that his own intelligence community is providing him and take that seriously. So the idea that he would add, um, you know, one more agency or one more person to that list is not surprising in terms of a strategy. That said, in terms of where it's specifically coming from, there's a number of people in his outer orbit, not necessarily entirely in the White House, but people like Steve Bannon, friends and confidants he talks to who believe what Phil just said, which is this probe is not wrapping up anytime soon. It's going to be a problem for the president. And they, for quite some time now, have been arguing for a more combative approach. And so he's certainly hearing it from them as well. Mika, was this effort to go after uh, uh, Mueller getting all these emails this weekend a part of that larger effort to just uh, discredit and throw mud on the investigation? The, the way most folks read it, uh, Mueller got those emails through regular process. The transition lawyers complained to Congress, but we didn't see both sides in court first thing this morning. That's right. I think the Trump lawyers clearly don't understand the state of .gov emails. Those of us who've had government email addresses know that what you write on your government email address, it's like what you write on your employer's email, is available to that person. And so they got the Mueller folks got them through the General Services Administration, which administers those emails accounts. It's completely legal. The Trump administration or the Trump team is very concerned about this. But this is part of a larger campaign to try and discredit Mueller. And every time, just prior to indictments, you see them ratcheting up these attacks, try to accuse them of partisanship, and try to undermine the integrity of the investigation. 